Welcome home to Homespun, a weekly internet gathering of family, friends, and businesses from Platte County. Our purpose is to connect our community and showcase the colorful threads that run through our tapestry. Grab a warm cup of hometown goodness, sit back, put your feet up, and visit with us a while. I'm your host, Mark DeLapp, and I bring to you portions of interviews from some of our own. Welcome home, Platte County, to Homespun. It's just an honor to be here in the Governor's Mansion with you and uh, Jenny Gordon and with Lynn Kirkwright. And uh, Jenny, why don't you uh, tell me what you do here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would be happy to and thank you so much for coming today. Um, so I'm the First Lady and the First Lady has an initiative and my initiative is a Wyoming Hunter Initiative. And so what we're working on is really not reinventing the wheel. We want to work with all the people who are already working in this area on the ground. And Lynn has been on our board from the start. She's been a great asset and a wonderful person. She is our treasurer, so we're, we're glad to have her. Um, and so you're kind of heading up this hunger initiative, correct? Mm -hmm. And Lynn, give me a little bit of a background of, you know, I know that, that you were heavily involved in politics for, for years. Uh, out of the Chugwater area, <laughs> and this last year you kind of got a vacation, um, <laughs> and you've vacation. taken a vacation from politics for a little bit, uh, although not really. So tell me a little bit about what Lynn Kirkwright's going through right now. Well, um, yeah, Dan didn't get reelected, but I have been, I was part of the spouses group, in fact I ran the legislative spouses group for several years, and every, every other year uh, during the session we would have a uh, luncheon to raise money for the First Lady's initiative, whatever that was. Um, so when Jenny became the First Lady, we were like, we're going to do an initiative. And Jenny was like, I want to do it around childhood hunger and food insecurity for, for children in Wyoming. I saw that as a part, if I'm not, tell, if I'm not saying this right, Spot as part of, part of your, your campaign, you really realize that this was a real issue in Wyoming. And, at that point, I think it was one in five children were food One in six. Now it now, is one in five. Now eight. it's, oh, now it's one in five? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. So anyway, that that was a big thing. And I was like, okay, the spouses are going to take this on. And we were amazingly uh, successful with the help of some, some of the lobbyists and some other people in raising $16,000 for the initiative right at the beginning. And I was like, I'm about this, Jenny, let's go for it. And then as I really like being involved in things that actually do something and have some traction. And I, could, I knew <laughs> from knowing Jenny and from seeing what she was doing that this was going to be a big deal and it was going to make a real impact and a difference. So they were, I was fortunate enough to be asked to be on the board and have been able to continue it. I'm actually the secretary, but that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. I don't handle You're money. Good with I, 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 <laughs> but anyway, we, uh, we've been doing that, and I cannot believe all the things Jenny has been able to prop up, and Trista and the rest of the team, and then the, the board uh, in one year. I mean, it's just been amazing. So you can ask Jenny a little that's bit more That's awesome. That. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit, Jenny. Um, where were you born and raised? So I was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska. My dad was in the Air Force, and I was born at Moffat. But dad had been stationed in Wyoming in the 50s, in Casper and Buffalo. Okay. And so um, we came every year for vacation. Um, when I have nine brothers and sisters. <laughs> so when you have a big family, you can take your family on vacation if you go camping for a month. <laughs> and, <laughs> provided you move every two weeks yeah. from your camp spot. Um, so we spent um, every summer in the Bighorns, and my dad retired here. And I came for one summer. I said, I'll stay one summer. And that was 41 years ago. And you've been here ever since? Ever since. You know, I, uh, I came from National Geographic. and. And when I came out here, one of the things that just really appealed to me was coming back to Wyoming after I'd been here on a college trip. And uh, there's something about living up here in the mountains 
that's just absolutely pristine and, um, and pure and beautiful. And, um, I know that uh, we've gone through uh, and weathered the storms of COVID like everybody else, but I don't think Wyoming has, has battled as much as anybody else. I mean, I think that we, you know, we naturally, they say social distance and, and um, uh, because we just don't have that many people here. Um, what is it, uh, where did you go to college, Jim? I went to the University of Wyoming. Okay. <laughs> so when you live in Nebraska, you got to get out of Nebraska. Sure, so. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I, li um, I lived and worked in Sioux Center, which was uh, about an hour north of that mm -hmm. in Iowa as a managing editor for a newspaper up there. And, and Lynn, where did you go to college? I went to, well, I went three places, but I ended up graduating from what's Shoot. now called Trin Trinity International University in Illinois, just north of Chicago. I, I, I didn't, I was not from this area, so I, I grew up in Wisconsin and then came here later. We, well, we know that. We know that I know. you, you and I both you were in the I. same conference. Yeah. You went to Brookfield East and I went to Menominee Falls East. Mm -hmm. And we probably sat in the same gym, we talked about that. and then. You went to my alma mater the first year. You went to University of Wisconsin at Eau Claire. I did. Which uh, is where I graduated from. Yeah. And then I went on to get my master's out of Trinity. And so it's kind of like, uh, I don't know who's been following who around here, but I ended up coming to Wyoming and finally I finding laid eyes people. on him before I saw him last summer. So. A lot of badgers here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so it's been interesting. and. Um, we, we have covered your story before, mm -hmm. Lynn, you and Dan. Yeah, I have to do that it's again. been a beautiful, beautiful, uh, it was a beautiful love story and a beautiful story of, of you guys in politics. Um, uh, as far as you, Jenny, uh, after college, where did you meet Mark? I met him up in North of Buffalo at the ski place, the um, cross-country ski place. Um, he had his girls, and I was up there with a friend, and his daughter was my friend's, uh, in his, or she was his, her teacher. And so we took her in to get her warm in the lodge, and Mark came to pick her up, and we'd ordered lunch. And I said, have a seat, Betty. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and a lot of people don't know about Mark's first wife died. Yes, um, yes and, she and, um, killed him many It's funny because Lynn's first husband died. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it's kind of fun how God in his infinite wisdom puts people together that, are, that have been broken by life. Mm -hmm. um, so when you saw Mark and you picked up his daughter, um, was it love at first sight? Mm. <laughs> I thought he was okay. Okay. <laughs> it go. took a couple of years to reconnect and, yeah. and to start, you know, dating and get married. But yes. so, did you ask him out first, or did he? Ask I him did ask him out at first. That's what. That's what I heard <laughs> See, a little bit of rumor about that. Yeah. So he. Um, well, I was actually married when I first met him. So okay. You know, that's oh, why that sure. happened. And. Uh, he came in, I, I'm in med tech, so I was working at the hospital, and he, his um, foreign exchange student was sick, and she came to get her blood drawn, and after lunch, I said, that's that guy that I met, and she was nice, I really liked him, and now I'm free. So I did call him up, and I asked him on a date. You did? Yeah, to go skiing. That was, <laughs> at the same place. You, you, watched, knew, you knew he liked that. For those of you watching, that was before HIPAA laws. Um, <laughs> that, that part yeah, is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so then um, Mark started to run for, for office? He ran for uh, Congress in 2008. He was okay. unsuccessful. He ran against Cynthia Lummis. Okay. And then um, he didn't run again for, he got on the Federal Reserve, which is obviously nonpartisan. Sure. And then um, when, in 2012, when our secretary, or excuse me, our treasurer sure. of Wyoming passed away, Joe Meyer, um, Mark put his name in for that position. Him and Joe were good friends and so, Mark was successful, and after that, he ran again for treasurer, and then for governor. And when he was running for governor, um, what kind of pressure is that on you as, as a wife? Oh, you know, it's just a lot of travel and a lot of events and just keeping people's names straight. So more just logistical, um, you know, and as far as the other stuff, I, I have really broad shoulders because of those nine brothers and sisters. and. <laughs> <laughs> I think that helps to be a people person, don't you? Uh, when you raise them in a large family like that, and, and uh, so you guys got to uh, move in, move on up to the governor's mansion. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been here? Um, we were inaugurated in 2019, January of 2019. Okay. So we're just coming up past our second year. Okay. 
have you actually moved in yet? Yes. I mean, you know, a lot of people say, well, you can move your stuff in, but you really don't take possession of a place for a couple of years. And uh, things that are in boxes and, and all over the place. And how do you like it so far? Well, we are very blessed. It's a beautiful, beautiful home. You know, the public side is on this side, the private side is on the other, and the grounds are amazing. Mm-hmm. So sure. we are beautiful. Yeah, we are very, very Okay. Last 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 summer, they planted a victory garden out back. Yes. That was oh, really cool. fun. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and tell me a little bit about your victory garden. So I wanted to, you know, with COVID, a lot of people were saying, you know, fruits and vegetables are hard to come by, and so I thought, why don't we just start a garden here, and uh, just planted corn and you know other vegetables, and it was really wonderful because I used to plant a garden every year at the ranch but hadn't had an opportunity, and, and that kind of sparked our new program, which is Grow a Little Extra, where we're asking home gardeners to grow extra in the garden. So, um, yeah, it just ties in perfectly. You have your hands in kind of a lot of different things here, Jenny. Um, I'm part of the Wild, Wyoming Food Coalition, and um, we had, um, on, a, on a previous uh, episode of Homes, we had Barbara Esco and her husband, who was a Vista, for them, and they're doing great things. I mean, from a little grassroots, movement, they are starting to make some major waves about pulling people together here in Wyoming and, and keeping our Wyoming dollars here in Wyoming, um, going from right from farm to fork uh, here in, in, in the state. Um, what's your involvement with that, with the Wyoming Food Coalition and what they're doing? Well, definitely have had contact with them. We work side by side with them in any projects. Um, I presented, I believe, for a little extra just a couple of weeks ago on their call. Um, and so I think we um, partner with them in programs that work together side by side, but not in all programs. So. Sure. Well, I know that they're, they're doing a great, a great work. Yeah. And, um, you know, the small producers that are out there, that's the big thing. You know, they felt so alienated out there. Now everybody's getting on the same page. The big question, of course, is uh, why we still have to go out of state for, for processing for our beef. Um, how come it's being so made so hard for the mom and pop stores to create a uh, you know a processing plants here, um, things like that? But they're addressing that. What we're more more interested in today here is your food coalition um, and your uh, hunger coalition, I guess. And how did you how did you come to come up with that idea? Well, my, both my parents were raised in poverty. Um, my dad was raised uh, during the Depression in the Midwest, and he was from a family of ten. His family, um, his dad got sick, lost his job, and then their home. So he went off when he was about 14 years old to find his way in life. Mom was born in Vienna, Austria, and lived all through the war. And I don't think she ever had enough to eat until she came to the States in 1950. Gosh. So, you know, you've got ten kids, and, and your dad's a senior master sergeant. You, um, you know, you, you have enough to eat, but just enough. But they always really sure. instilled it in us that, you know, you be grateful for everything you have. You never waste anything. Clean and your plate. Clean, clean your plate, plate. <laughs> yeah. CPC, clean plate. I was part of the clean plate. I was part of the clean plate. Yeah. 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 That was a big deal when we were growing up. Well, it's too big of a deal now because I can't get, I have to. I have an old CD about cleaning my plate. Except for uh, when you don't need to anymore. <laughs> well, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Jenny. So, um, and just to give back if you can. And so, you sure. know, I've always had that in the back of my mind. And when you're running for office, everyone says, what is your initiative going to be? And I thought, I want to work on hunger and specifically childhood hunger. And then um, Trista Ostrom, who um, works in my office, is just a go-getter, and, and together we just said, let's do a Wyoming solution to this Wyoming challenge, and let's always make sure we don't invent, reinvent the wheel. We work within the organizations on the ground, support them, um, raise awareness, do best practices, and sure. I think that's what it makes it work, is that every community is doing this already, but how do we help? Right, right. and I know you came to Wheatland for the uh, Book and Bite, um, which, which is a great, uh, a great uh, program that they, they run up there. Um, give me some of, the, some of the things that you're doing for the Hunger Initiative, and, and spe- specifically, let's go to Platte County. What are we doing in Platte County? Sure, well, we've done some grants. Um, they would be pantry refur- refurbishment, that's not the right word, replenishment, Replenish. thank you. <laughs> like, there's a word there. Um, so we've worked with both the Guernsey, um, the 
backpack program as well as the pantry there. And then with the church, and I, the name escapes me, and I should have looked it up, um, in Wheatland. And then For sure. we try to make sure a percentage per population of money goes to every county. Right. Now I know one of our Guernsey uh, ladies who's just an, a workaholic, Dondrea, was down here. Yeah. And um, she threatened to drive down on her Harley. And um, <laughs> it was like, we had like a major snowstorm that day, but uh, she's a hoot, and uh, she's she was like a one-man wrecking crew up there in Guernsey when uh, COVID hit, mm -hmm. and she was the one who prepared uh, hundreds and hundreds of meals all by herself for for the for the kids up there, um, and you know their mobile pantry is is going great up there in Guernsey, and and they uh, the city has. Uh, has rented them a building for a dollar a dollar a year, and so they have a new food pantry up there, and, and just incredible things. Uh, and they work with the Wyoming Food Bank. Um, how how involved are you with the Wyoming Food Bank? You know, we partnered with them on several of our programs. They are um, partners with us on Food from the Field, which is our gaming program, mm -hmm. and also Food from the Farm and Ranch. So if we have uh, someone donate a beef and or, or two and we pay for the processing and then they will pick it up and they'll distribute it through their distribution. So they have the logistics for the okay. distribution. And when you say we pay for that? The hunger initiative. The hunger initiative. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are some of the other causes that you support and, and, uh, and invest into? I know you guys are really invested into the state in a lot of different programs, but just give me a few of them that you guys invest in. Well, within the hunger initiative, there's some other things you haven't mentioned. Like the angel, oh, the angel counts. Yeah. yeah, that's that's one one of the things that's and tell part me of that. About that. Do you want to share? No, that? I want okay. you to share because I, I I I won't get it quite right. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, you. yeah. Uh, so traveling around, I learned there's uh, almost two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars worth of unpaid lunch debt in our state, and these are kids that kind of fall between the cracks. They don't qualify for the free and reduced lunches but they don't quite make enough so they get behind. So we've really worked on a program to help alleviate that debt. And what we've done is gone to two school districts, um, not Platt, or not um, Goshen or Platt, but um, the Converse County and Carbon County, okay. and to pilot this program. And what we've asked them is to take the child out of the equation, the debts between the parent and the school district. So they make the contract. If they pay off half of their debt, then we will come in and pay the other half. Sure, that it gives them a little bit of relief. And so far in Converse, they've already eliminated um, ten thousand of their forty-two thousand dollar debt. But but they get the family has to have some skin in the game yes. to make yeah. it happen, which we think is much more effective and than just how do they do that? How do they do that? By paying off their they, portion first, okay. so they have to pay their half, and then so we okay. match. Mm -hmm. So it's a matching type of situation, and that's that's good. And I think that if there's an investment from both sides. I think it's gonna it, it continues naturally when that happens. Um, so what's that called? Angel. Angel accounts. Angel, Angel accounts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very. So the other thing that the hunger initiative is doing is we have these infrastructure grants, and I'm reminded of that because I sit on that committee, and we we um, provide some grant opportunities for any of the pantries around the state that are that need things that are hard, you know, hard, hard, hardcore stuff, not. Not food, sure. but they need shelving units, or they need a dehydrator, or they need a refrigerator or a freezer because, and, and it, there was a lot of need last year because when COVID hit, there was much more need. These programs were, you know, just really being leaned on heavily. Right. Right. And so they, they could get food, like from Food Bank of the Rockies or whatever, they get food or have donations, and they didn't have any place to put it place to store it and so they we have these little mini grants and they're open to anybody throughout the state and I think Plant County got one or two. Yeah and I should have Tristan I, I there, know. I would Tristan, ask her. Tristan, we, we could <laughs> ask her. Um, I know Douglas got several because they were in our in our in our district right. as part of our district. Right. So they're they, they were they were really helpful. We've had some really positive stories that have come out of it and um, I think it really helped these pantries. Some of them like they didn't even have a computer so that they could keep their books in any kind of order and so they'd get donations and then you know if you donate to something they want people want to 
a receipt and they want to know where the, if it's really going to where they said it was going to and all those kind of things. So little things like that, which maybe don't sound like they're not as sexy as giving away the food, but they support those programs and really help them. Right, and I think that's really needed because there's a lot of people with a passion to help people, but no education in business. Right. And everything has got to run uh, above board in yes. everything that we do. So you guys are kind of helping organizations and people with that. Mm -hmm. um, what's the most, and I'm going to ask you first of all, what's the most satisfying thing that you've you've seen working with the Food Cool uh, Hunger Initiative? Yeah, the Food Hunger Initiative. The most satisfying thing. I think that, I, I, I think when, when we talked about how much money we raised in a year, $1.4 million in a year on a brand new program, I thought that was awesome and that money was it goes in, it goes out. It's not like a bunch of money that we're hanging on to. Sure. So it's impacting the communities in very tangible ways. I thought that was really satisfying. I don't know. So that's an, that's almost like an instant investment for you guys. It comes in and then it goes correct. It goes back up correct. Mm -hmm. um, what's the biggest expense that you have, Jenny, with this? Well, we have a free bookkeeper. <laughs> I do the books. <laughs> Jen, Jenny's really good. We really don't have books. very much overhead, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, I volunteer my time. Trista uh, works in my office, and she does a lot of the work. But she is, uh, you know, she works in my office, so that we don't have to cover that. Um, so most of our, our funds that come in, we try to get it right out. We don't take any administrative fees off the top. We want to make sure that people we paid some money for some. Um, PR yeah, and we've some done video, videos yeah. so we can promote the program sure. so people will know that sure. it's there. But it, and there's a lot of those only. people have volunteered portions of their salaries and stuff or portions of the, what they would have normally charged. Sure, now this program's only been going, it hasn't even been two years, has it? No, October of 2019 is when we launched. So it's going to be two years mm -hmm. old. Um, and has it been pretty successful in? The almost two years that you've had? I think so. We've distributed in the infrastructure grants over 110000 already, and we have another cycle. It'll be another 50000 that will go out in this grant cycle. We've replenished pantries through COVID um, to about multiple $400,000. Mm -hmm. um, and we're now working on the um, food or Grow a Little Extra, and so we're doing little mini grants for people, um, community gardens to start up. So. Um, yeah, I think it's been successful in getting that money, like Lynn said, in and out so that we are helping everyone. And we are in all 23 counties. That was the, the one thing I really wanted to ensure that even the smallest counties would be get, able to get money. Benefited. Um, I think that when COVID hit, I think one of the one of the smaller entities that really, uh, really came out good was those students that you talked about that slipped through the cracks. Um, I know that up in Guernsey and in Wheatland too, uh, there was no question as to uh, what their income requirements were or um, things like that. They uh, and, and students, uh, all students were, were taken care of as far as their lunches go. Uh, I thought that was just absolutely incredible. Um, it wasn't just for even the school kids; it was just any any, right, any child that was in that was in, yeah eighteen mm -hmm. years of age and, and younger. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of would like to see that being pushed pushed through again, and it sounds I'm glad like you said that because it's going to be renewed in the 2021 year. Oh, that's awesome. Yep, I just learned that from the Department of Education. Tamara Jackson is the person who made uh, the summer feeding. They fed off the summer feeding program waivers. That's why they could do those kids. Sure, sure. Um, what have you guys got planned? What's next for the? <laughs> well, we're working really hard on this the uh, Grow a Little Extra, which is the gardening program. And then um, we want to make sure that it's a local solution. So if we have uh, producers who want to donate beef or pork or lamb, we're working with the Wyoming Stoppers to get those into the food bank system as well as the you know little fairs that are county fairs around the state. We're going to work with purchasing secondary animals if we can. And so really just that Wyoming solution to, to our challenges. Yeah, I call it Wyoming friendly. Mm -hmm. I, um, I don't know if I've ever met anybody um, anywhere that I've ever lived that has been this willing to help one another. Um, for instance, the last 30-inch snowfall we had, 
up in Wheatland, which which uh, socked most of us in. Um, I can remember going outside of my door with a snow shovel up to my up to my knees in snow, and as soon as somebody saw me out there with a shovel, it was like a scene from a Frankenstein with pitchforks and <laughs> hay, you know hay forks. They were all they were all coming with their shovels like running down the street to help dig me out. Yeah. And of course, then when when I was dug out, that we looked for somebody else to dig out. Um, that's kind of the way it is here. In my yeah. It's yeah. kind of a kind of a different place. I've likened it to Camelot uh, a few times, although um, as the king of Camelot, Mark might not agree with me. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, and that, enough said on that, we'll put that into a different, different program. So we've got some great things coming, um, and hopefully we can keep this going. Where, where do you get your donations from? They're all, none of it is government money at all. So it's all donations from individuals and corporations. We've had some wonderful donors from Blue Cross Blue Shield, Rocky Mountain Power, um, Foster Freeze, who is from Jackson. Um, just some really wonderful donors and then individual donors as well. Who sends out the, the letters? Who does the marketing for you guys that will go out and lobby for this money? Well, the interesting part is it all came to us um, with very little lobbying. These corporations and individuals just stepped up as soon as they heard the need. Um, we have since thought we need to really <laughs> work yeah, on that. We formalized. But, but, well, when we, when we did that, that first luncheon, and we got kind of got the word around a little bit, and then it just built on, on top of that. And because pe people were saying to me, tell Jenny that when she needs more to let me know. And, and it was... You know, we'll find it. We'll we'll find you some more. So that was really cool. Yeah. So we will be working on strategic planning here in June sure. with the board to try to make sure that um, we're going to grow properly and, and um, do some of that marketing. Sure. So one of the things you might like to know a little bit about Mark is how does Jenny know what's going on out there? Because there's 23 counties. It's a lot. So maybe talk about the regional directors a little bit, just so they get an idea of what, what's going on with that for your lines of communication. Yeah, that's a great, great thing to do. So um, what we noticed during COVID is that we really didn't know what was happening on the ground. So we found uh, champions in regions, uh, split the state up into six regions, and then they would find the champions in the counties that they uh, represented, and then we would get information down to them. They, would, um, they had a need, they would get that information up to us. And so we really, even though we weren't, boots on the ground, we had boots on the ground telling us what they were seeing in their own communities. Yeah, I think that's very important because there's so many programs that are good in theory until you actually roll them out and then things slip through the cracks. But it sounds well, like there's the right hand doesn't that. know what the left hand is doing in their own county sometimes. Absolutely. So that, that helped connect them together sure. as well as connect them to the initiative so that we could we could support them. So I think Absolutely. it's kind of got a um, whammy. Do you have a mailing address or an email address that people are watching this that they want to uh, step out and, and be one of the champions of the Hunger Initiative? Sure. So I would first direct them to knowhungerwyo.org, which is our web page, and they can look at the programs because we do, um, you know, we'll collect donations from any of those funding programs or programs that they'd like to fund. Um, they can also uh, send it to 5001 Central Avenue here in Cheyenne, sure. 82009. And um, email, I guess, would be firstlady uh, at yo.gov. Okay. And do you read all your own emails? I read if they come to mind. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> but you've got to Trista read Trista reads day. most of the other ones. <laughs> Trista, come here and stand yeah, right here behind Trista, me. Trista, get over here. So just, she's going to be shy. Just, just, just get on your knees right there between. Just get on your knees right there. Right there you go. She's, this she's is Trista and Ostrom. Ostrom. And Trista is kind of the glue that holds a lot of things together, isn't she? Absolutely. She's the one who makes, puts the flesh on the bones. Yep, she makes the trains run on time, and she works tirelessly. She has hauled meat in her own car on her own time all over the state to Boys and Girls Clubs. Um, she's just amazing, so thank you for all you do. And I hit yeah. meat sometimes with my car, <laughs> <laughs> with the deer and things. And then but with the new lawn, you can now pick it up. <laughs> thank you, Trista. Thanks, Trista. Um, so, yeah, if people want to, if people want to be a part of this, it's very easy. And um, one of the things in Wyoming is very easy to help people. Uh, and we have a great need here. 
And so all you have to do, you don't really have to look around that hard to find something that you can plug into. And uh, part of the investment that you have is going to um, yield such a great reward uh, in, in your own life, in your own personal life, things like that. I found that. I, I, um, I think what a, what a great state. What a great, what a great blessing it is to live here. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was up in the mountains talking to mule deer and, and changing lenses, and they're fearless up there. <laughs> and here I am on, um, on a Wednesday afternoon, <laughs> sitting in the governor's lady. mansion. Yeah. And so it's, um, it's just absolutely incredible can, to can be I here. Can I have Jenny talk a little bit about food insecurity in Wyoming, just in the sense that I don't always think people really think it's an issue. Sure. You know, you don't you don't see it. It doesn't doesn't touch you. You you know, you think everybody's okay, but I mean, just yeah, talk a little bit about that, Jenny, because sure, yeah, I wasn't aware for a long time as well. I mean, I lived in the state. I didn't see it. Um, the first time I um, shopped up in Sheridan, Wyoming, and I ran into a friend of cereals and fruits. I asked her what she was doing. She only had three kids, and she said, "I do the Friday food bag program." And I said, "Oh, well." kids are you feeding in Sheridan County, pretty affluent county, and she said 500 a week. Um, they're doing about 1,000 a week here in Laramie County. They're doing um, 1,200 up in Natrona County, and about that many in Gillette. So there really is a lot of need, um, you know, one in five kids now was one in six. It's actually worse now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, through COVID. So, uh, you know, a lot of, I know they had a, a mobile food pantry in Cody and 600 cars showed up to receive those boxes of food. And so I think that we're all just one emergency away from being in need, but COVID has really just put that spotlight and made us all realize it's, it's your neighbor, it's your friend, it's your cousin. So, and it's not just in the cities, right, Jenny? No, no, rural oh, communities. Rural. I've been up in um, Weston County and Crook County, and there's a huge need up there, you know, as unemployment hits and, and uh, the oil patches uh, slow down, there is there are more and more folks that are, are trying to hang on, and you can, you know, you can get away with, you want to keep your house in your car, that's the only way you're going to keep, you know, looking for jobs, but you can cut back on your food a little bit, you can cut back on other things, and so, you know, that's what we really want to do is, is help augment those people who are trying to cut back to their home and their car. And I think, I think part of Wyoming, even though we're very good at helping our neighbors in a lot of ways, we're also very independent. Mm -hmm. But people don't want to say, I'm in trouble or I need something. And so, you know, if you talk to any of the teachers in the schools, they'll tell you, we know exactly the kids that come to school every day. Absolutely. And some of those kids that, you know, during COVID and whatever, or over on a weekend, that's why the Friday food backpack thing is so important because a lot of times they're not getting a good nutritious meal in their home on the weekends. On the weekends. Absolutely and I think um, like I said part of it is well you know I'm going to go there the the uh, new administration uh, is going to start to cut many many jobs um, I look at uh, BNSF Railroad um, losing 92 jobs up in Guernsey and I you know there's a trickle down there Okay, so then people have to move. School system starts losing people. The the local stores start losing uh, people. Things like that. And um, as as they continue to cut jobs here in Wyoming, um, it, we're we're going to see a a lot more of people that were in a good place that are no longer in a good place. And and especially those are the ones that are are not going to say um, I need help. But really, they need to uh, because there's help available. Correct? Right. Absolutely. And I think that's the, the stigma that people feel when they reach out for help. I think that's what we're trying to to erase. You know, and, and just mention that everybody needs help once in a while. It's not a handout. It's a hand up, and, and you can pay it forward because oftentimes people who relied on food banks and pantries will go back and donate afterwards when they're in a different situation, but 40% of the people who are using food banks and pantries today have never used one in their whole lives. No, and it's, it's the same That's principle, huge. I think that if you're in an airplane and the airplane's going up, the oxygen masks drop, you don't say, oh no, I don't, that's okay, I don't need any oxygen. 
for you to be effective to help somebody else, you have to put the oxygen mask on. You know, for your family to be effective, you have to be healthy. And, and you have to be strong enough to go out and help somebody else. So, um, you know, sometimes it's time to take the Superman capes off and put the oxygen masks on and get out there and realize that, you know, self-preservation first is going to enable you to go out and help people that are... And if anybody's nice watching you. and you want to know, because you might need a little help, and it's okay for you to need a little help, we all need a little help, mm -hmm. you can go to our website yeah. and you can look and you can see in your community where there's where there's help available. There's sure. phone numbers there, there's contact information there, and, you know, just call. Find out what's available in your community. Or call the Wyoming Hunger Initiative and we'll help help you to find out where uh, where you can where you can get help in your local Plug you in. Yeah. Absolutely. Well it has been absolutely wonderful with you two ladies today. I'm humbled to be in the presence of greatness here. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know about greatness. Because I know you have I know you have one. great I know you have great husbands and mm -hmm. as as uh, uh, I have witnessed firsthand you know, a great husband is only as great as the one that's driving him from behind. And I know we've got two women here that uh, not only love their husbands, but are, are driving them to greatness. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you guys here to stay Wyoming. And thank you for tuning in. It's homespun today. <laughs> <laughs>